So now we fasten these together. Um, we have essentially a, a pretty good assembly built. Now I'm going to move on to uh, showing you how to lay this out for fabrication and to get ready for cam work. So uh, this visualization is bothering me, so I'm going to go back to the way it was before. It's just shaded, a little bit easier to see. Okay, so what I want to do is lay these out as if it's going to be routed out on a sheet. Right now, obviously, it's not in a, in a form that is very easy to, to do. So what I want to do is I want to actually make another one of these assembly files. I don't want to use this assembly file because this is my main assembly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this assembly file and then start to break parts off of it. So I'm going to let's see if I can save as here. Yeah, I can save as. Actually, I'm going to save this first to make sure everything is saved correctly. Okay, now I'm going to go and save as. And I'm going to change the name of it to reflect what it's really going to be. And it's going to be uh, uh, parts spread out on a sheet. I'll call it blue chick router mount. It's a long name, but it's very descriptive. Now I have a brand new file named part spread out, and um, you can see that the other one isn't around anymore. I just changed the name of it. So here's the file that we're going to use. Um, and I'm going to delete some of the things that I don't need. I'm not going to need to, obviously, fabricate the fasteners. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to go back to the perspective. <coughs> so I'm going to delete the screws. I'm going to delete the cross dowels. And you need to sort of determine um, what plane you're going to be using to spread them all out. And I'll just use the plane that this is on right here. But the one thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to remove all of the constraints that we've created to make these things um, stick onto each other. So I'll, I'll remove the constraints from this one first. And by doing that, I'm actually should be removing both of them. So if I go to here, you can see that there's no constraints. So I can just move these around. And I can't move this around because this is grounded, but you know what? I'm going to ground this one instead because I want this one to be <coughs> the main plane. I'm going to ground that one, and I'm going to unground this one. So now I can move this one. Well, I thought I could. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, it's still grounded. Strange. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to put this one next to this one um, and have it as close as I can get it so the end mill will um, not have to cut this thing and not have to cut this part twice or uh, try to get as many flat edges against each other as possible so what I'm going to do is I'm going to constrain use the constraints and I'm going to use the the side to side constraint the flush constraint and I want this one with this side up to be constrained with this one I'm going to press OK, and you can see that it's on the same plane. Oh, you know what? This is not grounded. I need to ground this. That's weird. I thought I grounded that one. OK, so this one should be grounded. OK. Now this one is on the same plane. OK, so the next thing you need to do, well, we, we did a flush, and I was having a problem uh, getting the other constraint, because I need to constrain, um, a make constraint, this against this side, but I wasn't able to do it because um, previously when I was making this part, I actually created a taper, and I remember when I put the 0.75 in one of those uh, parameters, it actually uh, didn't do the thickness, it was, it actually um, modified the taper, so I have to go back in here 
and I had to remove that taper. So I'm going to go to uh, this part, and on this left-hand side, I'm going to go to the extrusion, and I'm going to edit the extrusion. Well, I can also edit the extrusion over here. So you have the possibility of ex editing the sketch, editing or creating a new sketch, or editing the extrusion. You can do it from here, or you can edit it from this location. So I'm going to edit here, and um, everything showed up pretty normally here. I just had to click on the more. Or the location of the taper is actually under the more tab, and this needs to be zero degrees. So now I should be able to constrain it by flush on the top and constrain it on the side. So let's go ahead and do that. So I want to constrain it this side, mating it to this side, and you'll see it's right next to each other. But you'll also under um, you'll also see that there's no way an end mill would be able to pass through this without cutting one of these pieces. So what we need to do is we need to create an offset. And I generally create a 0.28 inch offset. And the reason why I do that is because I want the bit, the 0.25 inch diameter bit, to be able to pass through it with a little bit of room because I do a roughing and finishing pass. A roughing pass is a little bit off or outside of the the um, the profile line and then the finishing pass is right on that line. So I'm going to press OK with that. I'll still be able to move it this way so if I have any other parts I could actually put it maybe over here or over here or whatever. So let's just take that and uh, and produce our our CAM file. If you don't have any other parts, you could just uh, do a, uh, another constraint maybe over here. Let's do a flush constraint just to prove that point. And now they're flushed together. I think I removed the grounding on this one. I want to put it back in so it's not able to move at all.